Welcome to the show. Today's show will be historical because we have with us today three great representatives of the Yamhill County Historical Society, Cindy Christensen, Sarah Miller, and Chuck Hillestead. Thank you so much for being here and bringing these, this incredible costume. And I am a... You're a farmer. I'm a farmer. <laughs> and Cindy, tell us about... Well, let's, before we talk about costumes, let's go way back. Oh. Let's start at the beginning of the history that we know in the area, and you have some right at your house. Yes, I've uh, got the Christensen's Olds house right next to uh, uh, the Glacial Erratic Park uh, State Wayside. And uh, we go back uh, 20, 30,000 years ago when we had one of the first uh, breaches of the ice dam up in the Missoula floods, and uh, we have a very large uh, erratic. Um, if you ever go out there, it's just a little quarter mile walk up a hill, and uh, Gorgeous views up there. And the, if you see the red barn down below, that's the size of the iceberg, according to the geology professors. Both my daughter took, daughters took geology classes as to how big the iceberg was that was needed to carry that rock there. And that rock is on the right, halfway to Sheridan? Yes. On a hill? Mile, on, on your just farm? Right, uh, right next to the farm. Okay. We're, it's right near milepost 39 off Highway 18. Okay. So 30,000 years ago? Yeah, approximately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move forward a little bit. What do we have next that's represented in the Historical Society Museum, for example? We have a collection of arrowheads that have been found off of the rivers from the native tribes that are around here. Um, we have some, we have few, but we have a few other artifacts, but mostly we have arrowheads. Um, some of them have been displayed in patterns. We have like a table that has the decoration done in arrowheads. There's thousands of them. Um, not all of them are on display because we have way mm. Also many have many mortars and pestles. pestles and, and I believe we have some war hammers and stuff too. And I, yeah, and we have, I think a basket or two. It's a growing uh, collection. collection. Yes. People can contribute to if they find something they want to Bring it down. You're sure, we're, sure. We're, we're a uh, charity, and there's tax deductions available, but we're always happy to uh, take a look at uh, donations. Somebody we just brought in the other day uh, for us to look at is an antique coffee grinder, a big uh, one. That, uh, now you're you're jumping ahead. We didn't get coffee quite yet. Let's no. uh, <laughs> let's, let's let's start if, now. If we have donations, though, we do have a sessions. Uh, committees at uh, both our Lafayette site and at our Heritage Center site and uh, we need to have anything it goes through the uh, sessions committees if it's going to be something that is uh, suitable to be taken into the collection or whether it ends up being giving an out and out gift or whether it would not be appropriate for us to uh, be taking it on we need to be able to properly house uh, and take care of items that we take so it's so let uh, us know yeah well, all right, let's continue through. We've gone uh, prehistoric, Native American, mm -hmm. and we start the European history about when? The 1830s. Um, first, Lewis and Clark came through and talked about how wonderful Oregon territory was, and then we started getting some of the European um, immigrants, and one of the first ones was Ewing Young, who settled outside of Newburgh, and he started the first American business in the Oregon Territory, and it was the first non-Hudson Bay Company business on this side because they had Fort Vancouver and a lot of the uh, trading and stuff happened through there. And then Ewing Young started his general store and his sawmill outside of Newburgh, and it was actually his death when he had no obvious heirs. Or will. Or, or a will <laughs> that caused the meeting at Shampooey to... Um, start saying we needed our legal system, we needed to be officially part of the United States, and that started us becoming a territory because there was no actual legal system to decide his estate because we weren't in Britain and we weren't in the United States. We were Oregon Territory that wasn't an official entity, and so we needed to start that process. And that, and I believe at that time, Shampooey was part of Yamhill County. The, um, Yamhill County was one of four original counties in the Oregon Territory. What's our oldest city in the in the county? Uh, let's see. I don't do, know. Don't I, know. I know Newburgh. One. I believe Newburgh is older than McMinnville, but I think Laf Lafayette Bayette is one of the oldest ones, ones in there. And that was our original county seat. And when did that? When did Lafayette get started, or when did that become the county seat? 
I don't know. I know in the by the 1880s they had switched the county seat from Lafayette to McMinnville because the site of our polling church, which is our part of our Lafayette site, was built in 1889, and that church was on the original Yamhill County um, courthouse site. Okay. So prior to 1889, they had switched and built the courthouse in McMinnville. So I I am not up on my Lafayette history, so I can't tell you. And we ha you have a, quite a presence in Lafayette, though, with your two uh, buildings there. Tell us about tell us about those, would you, Sarah? The one we have the um, polling church, like I mentioned, that was the 1889 church, and that has a lot of our furniture and other things in that nature collection. And then we have the Miller. Uh, log cabin next door that has houses our offices, the research library with all the books, the family files. The Yamhill County Genealogy Society has their um, library and research there. And upstairs, we have one permanent display of a bedroom set don donated from the Miller family, mm -hmm. and our and our um, our storage, collection. our storage, our collection that is not on display because we have a large, we have a large collection that is not on display that we can take care of. Among these is a hundred quilts. Yes. Now the polling church and the the log cabin. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it again? Miller. Miller log Miller cabin. Miller cabin. Yeah. Any relation? Uh, no. Okay. I'm no. They're open to the public. Yes, we have museum hours from ten to four on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. 10 to 4, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, you can and go over and see the displays they and have. And and the volunteers there, because we are an all-volunteer organization, um, know a lot more about the collection in the church. And they will, if you ask, they will take you on a tour and tell you about what's there. And you can spend hours there. You There's can spend a, a long artifacts. time there for looking through there. They've got most of our medical stuff is there, our... Uh, um, we have a lot a, of our, our kitchen item type things and the, the houseware things. We have a wooden geared clock. Clothing um, as well. We have some clothing, clothing, clothing. Old shoes, old hats. There is a collection of antique irons and um, the history of the toaster. We, we have several toasters dating back to the earliest days of electricity. And I think we have a pump vacuum cleaner from the 1880s, among other various things in the... Um, Plus a little test on what is the state bird, state motto, state rock, etc. State drink. A lot of people don't know uh, what the answers are to those, but if you go state mollusk. That's yep. right. If you if you go the state to the, mollusk. If you go I to have the to museum, admit I don't know that one. The gooey duck. Okay, I didn't know uh, that. And the state drink is not wine; it is milk. <laughs> 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 All right, we have a great, a great opportunity for people to go and get a, a lot of history, right? Just in Lafayette. Yeah. This, those two wonderful buildings. Say the, the days and time to come. Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 10 to 4. It's on Market Street, uh, 870 Market. Yep. Very good, very good. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about what um, the history of what we're wearing. Maybe, Cindy, would you start with what you... Um, I've got a modified dress that actually was from a... Uh, uh, what uh, uh, a richer trapper would have outfitted his uh, wife, which may have been a white wife or it may have been a, a mixed breed um, in Native American possibility. So it just is a pretty simple pattern to go so many lengths of fabric and cut it approximately this shape and sew it together. <laughs> And Sarah, what do you have? I have an 1874 dinner bodice and bustle skirt. Um, I have, there is a pattern, a lady who makes patterns adapted from the Victorian period to a modern sewer. Um, and she has some very fabulous collections. And I, I am wearing a corset and the, the hooped bustle that goes with it. And the pattern also, so um, company makes the hat pattern. So I made the hat as well. So you are the modern sewer. Yeah. You sewed all of I, I made all of this, yes. And that's not unusual for you to make a costume. No, it is not. Tell us about what you've done. I have made, I've made several variations on this. Um, I do, I do other history reenacting and I've made clothing for that too. Um, but I have several, 
I have a wardrobe of Victorian clothes. It is often easier for me to find the right outfit for a Victorian <laughs> level of formality than it is to find a modern formality for um, special occasions. Well, Sarah, whenever I go to an event, you've always got on something magnificent, and there's lots of detail for you to tell about it, what you've done and how you've researched it and, and made yeah. it, and I really appreciate your your talent, your work. Thank you. It's really yeah. something to see. You're, you're, you're definitely part of the show when I go to the <laughs> yeah. historical museum. Uh, that's why they keep me around. Is, um, <laughs> but actually, the, I discovered this pattern, uh, this company, um, going to the first Handmade Holiday event, and another one of the volunteers had been wearing a fabulous costume, and I asked where did she get that, and she told me, and then that's sort of why I joined the Historical Society, was to have a place to wear this, mm -hmm. too. All right, and you've branched out in a lot of ways over there, and we'll talk about yeah. some of your in individual roles in the in the organization in a minute. But let's not miss, miss this fantastic outfit here. <coughs> well, Check. this is uh, Victorian uh, gentleman, 1890s, uh, robber baron, banker, uh, or undertaker. Uh, the the outfit, uh, including a frock coat and spats. Uh, those are all uh, new. The only two antiques are me with the white hair and this. Uh, this is a genuine beaver hat. It's uh, really delightful. And what's interesting when I acquired it is it comes with its own luggage. Absolutely uh, useful for nothing whatsoever except this particular hat. Uh, but uh, I, I basically went in and said, I've got this hat. Give me the rest of the outfit. And this is what era? Uh, this would be about 1890s. Uh, now, the on the top hats, and they're really kind of fun to wear, uh, you, you've seen the ones that compress. Well, there's the same time period, but those were for when you're going to the opera. You would squash it down so you wouldn't block the view behind you and stick it under your seat. But this is, this is street wear. Very handsome. If you go with that hat earlier, let's say in the time of the trappers, the stovepipe hats were also very popular. They would put their dry tinder in the hat for uh, starting fires. And to keep it dry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it, it was it was beavers, and it was these hats which encouraged a lot of the uh, people coming out here because there was a fortune to be made. And this is genuine uh, beaver. Of course, uh, the mercury that you'd have to use to uh, tan it and make it uh, uh, kind of dangerous. Uh, but uh, uh, there was a fad, and they come in all sizes. There's some of them straight. Uh, this one is uh, kind of flared. Uh, some are shorter. Some are taller. But uh, that's how you tell wh when the hat's from. Yep. Wonderful. So the, you have a lot of costumes, and you you brought me a farmer's outfit, basically, right? Mm -hmm. it's well, it's a farming community. That's what we uh, have our uh, volunteers when they come uh, help us out for our Pioneer Days programs. We have some costumes available for the adults to wear. We're able to go costume about 60 kids. Uh, we service most of the uh, schools in uh, Yamhill County if they're wanting to be coming out there. We try to accommodate them and uh, they get about four hours of what life was like for the earlier settlers uh, during that time. What's the reaction to the kids what, what, after they go through those four hours? What, what have they learned? I, oh, school's I, terrifying or else they I have school. heard best field trip ever uh -huh. it is, is a common one. Best what, what happens that they just that they feel like uh, the schoolhouse, they, they tend to think that our, because we have a school marm who teaches like they would have done in the 1880s. Who's the school marm? Uh, uh, our, our main school marm is Carolyn Stastny. Yes. I've had, I've been schooled by Carolyn and mm -hmm. it's um, a riveting experience. <laughs> you pay attention. They, they don't quite make the difference between strict and mean. So oftentimes that school marm is awfully mean and then we have to correct, no, she's strict. Okay. Um, but it does kind of help with, if they've been through the school portion to um, if they're starting to be unruly is to threaten to send them back um, <laughs> um, sometimes that is, we mostly say that as a joke and they kind of know but they know to behave um, but they've done music and they've done, dipped candles we've I tend to do the candles and the sewing we teach them either how to make a running stitch or how to sew on a button so they go to these they, stations they that all, are mailed. They'll be doing stations all all day. They'll have a, one of the stations is with a covered wagon. In the afternoon, they'll be doing chores, whether it's outside chores from uh, washing clothes to uh, harvesting in the garden or planting the garden. Sometimes they've even gotten to plow 
when we've uh, had our mule skinner out there when we're trying to get the garden put in. Um, from taking care of animals, we always try to have something out there, at least animal-wise. And they do the brace and bit? Uh, they, they may do the brace and Crank bit. The they'll the corn, the thing that strips the kernels off the corn. corn. They've been working on peeling logs for making a mini log cabin. They will use the big crosscut saw. They make rope. Um, they do all sorts of the potential blacks, things. The blacksmith is out there. I don't believe that. I believe that they do a demonstration at the blacksmith shop to show what that is about. Um, well, let's talk about the blacksmith shop. Mm -hmm. That that's a big deal. There's you have modern blacksmiths there. Yes. They yes. know what they're doing. Yes. Just mm -hmm. like the old timers. Mm -hmm. Also learning. There's tutoring that goes on to become a blacksmith there. You can sign up to take courses in becoming a blacksmith. I actually had a chance to um, do a little bit of blacksmithing last year. Um, we had, I was able to come in and make one thing, and they helped me talk, talk through it and helped me make, make a wall hook um, at the blacksmith shop. And so, yeah, they, they are love to share what they know and to see the fun of somebody getting it. So really, if I wanted to sign up for a class and <clears throat> take a pair of tongs and stick that iron in the fire and yep. beat it with a hammer into something and be taught how to do that, I can go do that at the historical society. Yes, yes right. but you pretty much need to be a member once you're working with something with the, some of the volunteer things just because of liability issues and stuff. Okay. But it's and a, let's uh, talk about being a member. <clears throat> Who wants to introduce membership? Oh. Um, Membership is available both for individuals and for families. Um, it is a yearly fee. We have changed so it starts on January 1st and goes through the end of December. Um, membership gets you our newsletter, free entry into all of our, our events. And this um, this year we're chain, uh, raising the price at Farm Fest to $8 an adult. Um, so that... Best bargain in the county. Yeah. Th oh, uh, I believe a family membership is at... 30, 25 30, yeah. or 30. $30. This is very reasonable. Um, so in that, and a family membership would get two adults and two children or as many children as are legally in. It, it will probably have to go up. We have a variety of uh, things that we want to accomplish. And uh, increasing the membership, increasing the revenue uh, is something that uh, I guess you have to expect uh, these days. But uh, we, we promise you're getting great value mm -hmm. uh, for what we're asking here. As you've already heard, there's all kinds of things well, you, going on. You also get a reduced rate on the rentals. A reduced rate on the rentals. There is a discount at our, our products um, at, at, the La store. at the store at Lafayette and things. Now, the rentals, I, what does that mean? We rent, we can rent the activities building out for a group of events. We also have a meeting room that has a projector system and we are in the process of getting a warming wa kitchen warming which kitchen getting towards the final stages of getting that completed. so caterers can come in to come in and do do things so you can and have and we have our center heritage hall which is the, available for rent sometimes the amount of clearing out of the collection in the heritage hall can be negotiable on your on your rental um so there is um there is plenty of opportunity that if you have a big meeting for your organize either your your organization or your business, we can accommodate a large portion of that. And we have our a square dancing club that meets there, there regularly. regularly. The and Native uh, Plant Society uh, of the soil, the entire, soil water conservation yeah, district. The their sale. Uh, yeah. Rinse the entire activity building, uh, which is a very large structure, uh, to sell plants. So. Uh, we're, we're trying to give back to the community as well by providing a, a really reasonable price uh, place for rentals. Yeah, the plant sale, they loved it there. They've oh, been yeah. out in a parking lot in the rain for years, mm -hmm. some, uh, down <laughs> on West 2nd, right? And they came out there exactly. and it was a great day yeah. to sell plants and they were really pleased Or the with snow. That. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always looking for more uh, opportunities and uh, anybody interested. Uh, uh, and in that regard, we're uh, seeking for the first time to hire somebody to be an events and rentals coordinator so that uh, we can be even more accommodating. And you have a lot of events. You have an event uh, on one or two a month? Is that Most right? months. One a month about, through the year. It averages out to about one a month. I don't believe we have one in January, and I don't believe we have one in July. Um, some are smaller, some are huge. Uh, the two biggest ones are Farm Fest and Harvest Fest. And Farm Fest is really great time. Uh, because uh, there's uh, horse-drawn plows. They, they compete on uh, 
uh, of plowing. Uh, we have actual planting that goes on, That's, and mm -hmm. later on in the year we have Harvest Fest, uh, but so with the antique tractors. It's, it's the largest plowing competition west of the Rockies, or has been the last it, number of by years. by horses and mules. And mules. Yeah. It is. What is the the North American Draft Horse Association holds their plowing competition in conjunction with our Farm Fest, and last year we had fifty teams of mules and horses. And all kinds of things are going on. It's not just the the, the plowing, although it's great fun uh, to watch in the competition. Uh, but uh, there's all kinds of sales of uh, things that are going on. We have vendors come in to uh, sell things. Uh, we we make uh, the half-ass ice cream, a donkey-driven crank to uh, turn out ice cream. Uh, the blacksmith shop is working, the sawmills, we have a working sawmill there. Uh, the school is open, uh, music is going on, uh, you can explore the museum, there's all kinds of things that go on on these events. The one thing that I go to see over and over is that big steam tractor. Yes, that Peerless, the, the, the 1912 Peerless. 1912 Peerless uh, steam, steam piston, Traction it's, engine. It's, Traction it's engine. very Thank interesting you. with those because most people don't realize that you have to have the yearly inspection and stuff by the state and all these things for having it up to snuff and the steam and the restoration work. Yeah, and they x-ray the, the they, boiler. They're not having sure to no go cracks. do that now, but okay. they, had, they did that initially. Yeah. And, well, uh, well, we've also had other uh, organizations come in. Uh, just this past year, it was a... Uh, uh, a steam engine group that brought oh, that in was things. The, they brought in some things that was with our September event, which we have in there, which is called Treasures in the Attic. And so we had, uh, we thought we'd be accommodating, we also have a quilt show going on at that time, uh, and we thought we'd be a little bit accommodating for some, uh, well, some men really don't want to go see a quilt show and take a look at antiques. So it was a s small engines and uh, other things were out there on the uh, old iron club that was out there exhibiting with things on uh, you know different devices and, and such. She mentioned treasures in the attic. Uh, that's a uh, interesting event too because a lot of people have up in their attic something, you know, an old hat or something. Uh, just like the Antiques Road Show on OPB, you can bring it in for a really small fee, five bucks. Experts will tell you what it's worth. And uh, you know what? What a great service that is that we can provide uh, for the county. And you do that once a year. Once mm -hmm. a year in September. In September. Usually around the first or second weekend. Okay. Isn't it? It, it, no, it's more like the third. It is second it, to third. Second to third. Somewhere if you're in a there. member, you get our calendar that shows up every month in the newsletter because September is a great month as well for the. Uh, we have antique uh, baseball games, a vintage baseball. Our own uh, baseball team called the... Uh, Gris Millers. The Gris Millers, the McMinnville Gris uh, Millers in uniform. And antique baseball, uh, you know, it, it's kid stuff that they play nowadays for the World Series. Because back then, it was no gloves. Hardball with no gloves. Well, it's not quite as hard, <laughs> but, but they vary a lot. And when is the baseball game? It, we've made it to be the second Sunday of the month, which is our meeting month for the September. September. Because um, every month when we have a meeting, we have a program that goes with it. And the baseball game was this year's September program. And I've been talking to Dave Rucker, who's in charge of our team. And we think that the September, <coughs> excuse me, meeting month is the best time to hold it. So we don't have to have another event because our calendar gets full. But because we also have this meeting, and it is the way to come back after having three months off for summer. And it, it also is far enough after we've harvested, because our field is literally a field. Uh, a month before at Harvest Fest, it was oats. And so we have to wait until after Harvest Fest so we can have our baseball field. And, and during that Harvest Fest, that they actually harvest and, and bale and do other things. But uh, uh, she had uh, mentioned... Uh, uh, the general meetings every month. We have a, a meeting which, among other things, some presentation uh, goes on. And uh, this uh, coming month, in fact, if you come out there on this Friday and Saturday, there's a display because we're not looking for ancient history. We're also looking for just history of Yamhill County, period. So it's a, a veterans display of veterans who are associated with Yamhill County. And that'll be there from 10 to 3 on Friday and Saturday. And there, it'll also be up for Sunday. And we talked about at the the general meeting and and it will be taken down the Wednesday after Veterans Day so if they uh, our museum is open Friday and Saturday 10 to 3 the 
the McMinnville site, the, the Heritage Center is open 10 to 3 on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but those those uh, general meetings are every month except? Except September through April, the second Sunday of the month at 1.30 is when we start our potluck. We start our, we do a little bit of report from the board and things at, after the potluck and at about 2 o'clock we start our program. It's getting complicated. Let's yep. go, let's yep. give a website. Uh, Yamhill County History dot org. Yamhill County History dot org. Yamhill County History dot org, and all these dates and will Thanks, be on yeah, there now. All, who can come to these general meetings? If if, if, if the if general meetings are open to anybody, um, show up. Show up. Uh, we, it depends on the topic. Um, I range the topic, and so if, September through April, we have regular general meetings on the second Sunday of the month. May because second Sunday is Mother's Day we meet on the second Tuesday and that's when we do our volunteer celebration because it is the oddball meeting and we won't have meetings for June, July, and August because it's summer. A lot going on. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about how each of you came to be a member of the Historical Society just because I want to give folks out here the idea of anybody can join and there's different reasons why. It doesn't have to be the right reason or the, 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 the reason that you need to have. Chuck, you're the newest member, is that right? I am actually. How did I, you happen to? I, I'm new to McMinnville. Yeah. Uh, 2011, we moved here from Cannon Beach, uh, but I always loved historic preservation, and I had put about uh, four properties in the National Historic Register that uh, mm -hmm. I, I've owned, and um, you know this just looked like a, a fabulous thing that uh, was available here. Uh, also, like the Victorian, and uh, just anything to do with uh, history reading or uh, I didn't get into costumes until fairly uh, recently but uh, that's fun too. What was your first uh, contact with the Historical Society? Uh, well I wonder what that gigantic uh, building was on uh, Highway 18. Uh, it said uh, museum and I was thinking well okay there's a few dusty items but man that's a fantastic collection. There. So you just drove up? Just drove up, uh, looked in, and uh, I'm also a photographer, so I, I really love the old things to photograph. And thanks to the museum, I, I've won a substantial sum of money and have uh, three photographs hanging in a private show right now at the Senior Center, all of which were photographed uh, just at the museum. A pair of old shoes, some uh, blue uh, uh, bottles in uh, a window, and a fellow board member. He's won more prizes for me than anybody else. <laughs> Sarah, how did you come to be part uh, of this? My husband and I are potters, and we were um, invited to the first handmade holiday, or we saw the notice about the first handmade holiday in the newspaper and contacted about <clears throat> having a booth there. And that was, I think we were on handmade holiday number seven. And I've always had a fascination with history. And I've at that time I was looking to do some Victorian costuming and there were some people wandering around in it and I'm going, okay, this might be a place for me. And so. Wonderful. So Handmade Holiday is a place that invites craft. V vendors of, of handmade craft works. Uh, we have about 40 to 50 of them throughout the three, mu three buildings in the um, Heritage Center. And so that's the first weekend in December. It is a great place to do Christmas shopping. There is no admission. We, we collect food for the food bank. Very good. Thank you. And I'm glad that you saw that notice and came to play. Yep. Cindy, I how got, did you? Uh, about the first time they ever had uh, Harvest Fest, one of the people involved with it, one of the Watts, uh, conned me into coming down there so we'd have animals on display. And I didn't have the heart to say no, so I brought all these baby ducks and geese and turkeys and chickens that were very, very friendly, and things went really crazy, and I sort of got roped in there on out. And um, eight years ago, I got uh, onto the board, and I'll be stepping off the board this uh, December. All three of you are on the board right now. Yes. Yeah. And I'll be uh, just doing my education coordinator and looking for some other people to start to step to fill in uh, those roles. It's I love to volunteer, but it's sometimes more fun just to volunteer instead of having to be somebody who's in charge. <laughs> We have not even scratched the surface of what's available yeah. at the historical museum. There's there's a history of plows, of dairy, there's logging, the, the blacksmith history, quilts, textiles, photos. You have eight buildings, 
it's something to come and see. Yes. So a world class museum complex. There's more than one in this county. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very good. Very good. And, and we have the two sites, so don't don't think that we're just the heritage center and all of the the farm equipment. We also have the other at Lafayette. Thanks for being here. Yes. It truly has been a historical show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.